Hey guys, Joe Dickinson here from Vintage King, and today we're going to take the first listen to the Universal Audio Apollo X6, one of the new interfaces from the recently updated Apollo Rack Mount series. The Apollo X6 is a high quality Thunderbolt 3 16 by 22 interface that features two Unison enabled mic preamps. It comes equipped with surround formats up to 5.1 and fold down monitoring. One of the best features about the new Apollo line is the Hexa Core DSP processing, which is six Shark chips, 50% more than the quad revisions. It also has plus 24 dBU of headroom, meaning you can interface with the rest of your studio gear to get the best possible performance. The interface's built-in talkback feature allows you to communicate with the band whilst you're in the control room. The X6 is ideal for the home and project studio environment. And here we have Brandon Murphy, our resident synth guru, to show you how he uses it in his setup. So what's up everybody? We are hanging out in my bedroom studio located in Detroit, Michigan. And today I have the Apollo X6 with me and we're just gonna kind of basically run through a beat that I've made. Uh, I've been watching a lot of old Miami Vice episodes, wanted to do something kind of evoked a boat chase. So that was my inspiration for this. <laughs> And today I'm using Ableton Live to make my beat and producing with the push here. Uh, we also have the modular synth in the background that we might get into in a little bit, maybe incorporate it in and do some improv with it. Uh, but for right now, I'm just going to walk you through this beat kind of step by step, show you the tracks I have and the UAD plugins that I'm using on it. So let's check it out. Cool. So this first track I have is kind of like a, as you can see in the title, cheese lead, kind of like a brassy 80s lead. So we're going to Check that out. First, I'm just going to disable my UAD plugins on here so we can kind of hear it dry. Let's check it out. Very anthemic. So, pretty basic. So, the first plugin I have here is just the API 550A and all we're really doing with this is just kind of boosting some of the, the highs, just to get some crispiness in there, and a little bit of high mid as well. So let's hear what that sounds like. Just kind of brightens everything up. And then to the left of that, I just have the Moog ladder filter plugin. One of them this is the Moog multi-mode filter, SE. And I'm just gonna kinda improvise with that a little bit later and just tweak the cutoff a little bit. So give us a little taste of that. It's a really great rendition of a Moog ladder filter. Sounds really good. So next we just have this kinda plucky arpeggio track. We'll just bring it in. Super simple, and if we click on the track itself, you can see we don't have any UAD plugins on it directly as inserts, but we do have some send set up. So uh, I have the fantastic EMT 250 as a return. It's a wonderful like 80s digital delay, kind of like slapback echo thing. I believe Toto used this for Africa. That's the legend. So we're just gonna bring this in a little bit and listen to how that sounds. Pretty simple. Moving on to our next track, we have, as you can see here, our vanilla Moog bass. And the first one I chose to use is the Eden World Tour WT800 amp. I actually used to own this amp back in the day, and it does something really magical to bass that I like a lot. Um, a lot of it has to do with this great enhance knob. And I just really like the EQ a lot, so let's bring that in. Cool. And we also have, of course, the infamous LA-2A. Kind of give it some beef and some girth. 
Cool, moving on, we have our drums. It's basically just a bunch of layered up drum machines from the 80s. So we'll give that a listen. And that's it, just raw. So one of my favorite plugins is the UAD Distressor, which is awesome. Sounds very, very, very reminiscent of the original. It kind of just smooths that snare out, brings everything up to like kind of the same volume. But the real magic happens when we utilize these returns over here. So mentioned before, I have kind of this like squash track, my parallel compression track, and we're using the API 2500 bus compressor. And we also have, of course, can't have an 80s track without some digital reverb. We have the Lexicon 224 doing our Phil Collins snare. So let's listen to what that sounds like with our returns. That's with our returns, let's listen to it without. And last but not least, we just have this little drum fill in here that I programmed. It's kind of just processing it a little bit separately from the main drums, but we have the same uh, return setup. So we're sending it to that 2500 <clears throat> and uh, that Lexicon digital reverb. So let's check that out. <laughs> Super 80s. So these are my basic building blocks. I think at this point, I actually am gonna jump over to the Eurorack modular and just do a little bit of improv, maybe something kind of percussive to complement this a little bit. And maybe we can chop it up in a bit and uh, I don't know, let's see what we can get out of it. So we have what I recorded inside Ableton now. It's all uh, tempo synced. I ran a clock out from live. And I'm not gonna go crazy with plugins. I just wanna use just a little bit of like sweetening and fattening. Uh, so I'm gonna use the Fatso Senior. And let's listen to what we have recorded without it. And then we'll pop it back in, in and out. Cool, so that's basically all that we have in here for our arrangement. The last thing I wanted to point out is just what I have in my master bus, and that is the Studer A8800, which is kind of a notoriously processor-intensive plugin. Uh, since we have six processors to work with, we can really go crazy and throw as much of this into the mix as we want to. So I just have one instance on the master, and using it pretty subtly, it's mostly just for saturation and a little bit of breakup. So I'm gonna bring the master up, and we're just gonna A-B that and hear what it sounds like. And again, I'm going for grimy. This is kind of deliberate, so. So thanks so much for hanging out with me. That was a lot of fun. And I hope that gives you an example of a couple other ways to use the UAD plugins. We obviously have our, you know, fantastic Fairchilds and Neves, but there's a lot to dig into here and to also kind of use and abuse. You can get a lot of different styles and genres. And uh, yeah, 
So thanks a lot, and without further ado, let's check out the track. Thanks for joining us for the first listen of the Universal Audio Apollo X6. If you'd like to add one to your studio, feel free to reach out to your audio consultant or visit us online at vintageking.com. Also, if you want to learn more about the other interfaces in the X-Series line, feel free to click the link below and find out which one's right for you.